You know, I've, I've been looking forward to this all week. Oh, me too. I have not been able to sleep. I tell you. You're going to be mad at me, but I'm not going to tell you until later. But why don't you tell everyone what we're doing? Moving up past, I'm going to be mad at you. I already am mad. <laughs> She's mad because I stole the intro and changed it on her. <laughs> so I'm flexible. I'm like water. So what we're doing is talking about a two agile analogies. I use analogies all the time to help people understand some more complicated esoteric concepts. And if we use those to tie something to people's brains that they already understand, it makes it so much easier to understand the concepts we're trying to teach. And analogies, that's the one without like or as, or is that the one with like or as? Okay. So um, with um, as or like are similes. Oh, and uh, metaphors, you don't use those terms at all. It's like, this is this. Analogies are kind of all of the above, where you're kind of using this and then comparing it with this. Did I tell you to be an English teacher? Oh, yeah. were you? Mm -hmm. You know, my favorite thing about English teachers is when they mispronounce my name. How would they pronounce it? I don't know if we want to go rated R on this podcast. Oh, I have a thought, but yeah. Yeah, that, that thought is exactly how they pronounce it. And remember, they're an English teacher, and that's the first thing on their mind in seventh that's, grade. That's because that's all they hear from the kids. Probably. And I would tell you the song, but also we're not going R-rated. So. Aww. I had a song about me, too. Really? When I had Poison Ivy. But kids are mean. Well, you know, so are adults. That's, that's true. That's true. At least the kids are open about it, right? <laughs> oh, you know, completely off topic. I don't know if we want to derail at all. I want to tell you, I won't. We won't do it now. We'll talk about it later in our next thing. Ask me about the Boy Scouts and the ballpoint game. It was amazing and right online with this conversation. But I, I can't derail the... Is it analogy? Okay. Yeah. The experience. I thought it wasn't an experience you were going to Well, share? yeah, but I don't want to derail this because it might go long. And like all men, I dominate conversations and I can't shut up. So I have to shut mm -hmm. up so we can mm -hmm. get started mm -hmm. with analogies. Mm -hmm. That sounds good to me. I like that you're self-managing. I really appreciate that. All right. So let's get this party started. Well, not ladies first, but it was your idea. So you get to go first. Oh, don't say ladies. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's not because you're a lady. It's because it was your great idea. But that's another, that's another topic for another day. All right. So here is mine. And it's actually a story. So the, the, the concept I'm trying to teach here is let's suppose you have this big piece of work. Like it's so big. It's going to take us months and months to, to actually complete it. And then let alone get feedback along to the way to make sure we're building the right thing. And then teams are always like, uh, how do I cut it up into slices? And we teach this concept called vertical slicing versus horizontal slicing. So let me tell you a story where this just like God, illuminated it for me. This is a true story. Those are the best kind. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because I'm passionate. So many years ago, when my youngest son actually liked me before now, and I can tell you something he said to me, which proves that he's not the same little kid he was before. So I used to create this like really simple task list. I put it on our sliding glass window for our chores. So like to do, doing, done. And I would create my little sticky notes like this and put them up there. And then they thought it was really fun, like for a week to like take those things across and get things done. So I'm like, high five to me again. Right. And so one day my parents were coming up for dinner. And so as usual, I think we mentioned earlier that I'm a slob. Our house was a wreck. So we have this, we've got to clean the house. We've got to get the house clean. And my son Ryder, he said, Hey mom, can I create the little tickets or whatever we called the little post-it notes? I'm sure. Absolutely. That'd be awesome. So I left, I came back in and he had created the tasks and he had divided the work, the big work, clean the house in a very interesting way. Can I guess? Yes. You may guess. Was it you getting all the hard stuff? <laughs> That would have been a null another. I like that. Oh, it should have. He didn't assign people yet. He probably would have otherwise. Yeah. Good point. Good point. I like that. He had divided it like this. So he put things like this. Walls. Clean the walls. Clean the floors. Clean all the windows and so forth. And I'm like, dude, wh why did you break it down that way? That's not how I would have done it. And he says to me, he says, he says, mom, it's easier for me because I get all the stuff to clean the floors out one time, clean all the floors in the house and put it away. Same with the windows and same with the walls. I'm like, oh, you just horizontally sliced clean the house. So I tried to explain to him that um, 
well, it does make sense for him. Like I never thought it. Yeah, that probably would be easier for you. We only have a small window of time before we can get things done, uh, at least sufficiently done in order for my parents to come up and not criticize. Don't worry, me. they'll do it anyway. They'll find something. So let's instead like do it by rooms. Let's do it by rooms where the majority of the rooms are just that really, really matter are the kitchen, the living room, and the bathroom. And we'll want to do all this stuff within each room. And then if there's time, we can do all the other rooms as well. And if there's not, we'll just shut the door and not let him go down there, meaning the basement. So <laughs> the analogy here, you probably see where this is going. Anastasia, do, do you like it so far? I do. I do. So <laughs> the analogy is when our technical teams or development team, whatever kind of work you do, it is very tempting to split the work by what's convenient for me. Let's suppose I'm a software developer. Hey, if I'm in the database, I'm going to get all the database stuff done first. And then I'm going to go and do all the middle tier and then the UI tier. And then several months down the road, we'll integrate it all together. The problem with that is just like my house cleaning analogy, it's not adding that business value along the way. We're okay. I've got this one room done. I can go and show it to my mom and say, look, I'm not so bad after all, am I? right? And then keep adding on to that. Same thing with our technology that we're producing. I can't get that full feedback from a technical perspective. I'm not even sure if the database and the military will play, play together until months down the road. So I take a little chunk, this vertical slicing, or take a little bit of each piece, package that up, get it to done, done. And then I can showcase it. I could potentially even sell it and everybody's happy except for the grumpy developer who still won't do it. That's okay. You know, I like your analogy so well. It's that, you know, you look at a child and you say, okay, is this child really going to clean every wall in the house all at once? Uh-uh. What's going to happen <laughs> is one, one wall is going to get clean and then they're going to stop and nothing's finished. Mm. And that's a good point. Yeah, exactly. At least in the worst case scenario, you've cleaned the guest bathroom. And that's the embarrassing ones. You have a, the most important unit of work done first. I was thinking the kitchen was most important and I was just gonna, oh, the bathroom's out of order. So that was my backup plan. See, the trick with me, if I don't clean the guest bathroom, my mother stays in a hotel. So I already know the plan. Ooh, <laughs> smart move. My parents are just 15 minutes away, so it's not an option. But yeah, mm. absolutely. Um, it, at the very least, we need something done done. I, I, like you could have immaculate walls in the whole house, but everything's a mess. It's not going to be a win for anybody. Well, how old was Ryder when he yeah. came up with that plan? He was probably, let's see, where was I going? I was right ready to go to Minnesota. I think it was like maybe he was eight, eight or nine, I think. He's so smart. That's still a pretty good plan for an eight-year-old. I know. That's why I was just like, because I was trying to teach some uh, a team that concept and they weren't getting it. So I had this huge dog and pony show and... I don't think they got it either, but that's okay. That's okay. It's in there somewhere. So yeah, smart kid um, was super congenial. Now, not so much, but he's a teenager. When I was in Boy Scouts, yeah, I, I, I don't want to disparage your analogy at all because I love it. It's so perfect. Well, we, we were impatient little children. You know what we did? We were supposed to cook brownies for dessert. So we make the mix and we put it in the Dutch oven and we're so impatient. We just eat brownie soup. So who cares if it's done? We're just going to li live with it anyway. Mm, that's good. Huh? That's good stuff. Funny, yeah. right? When we talk about children and what teams end up with, when nothing's finished, you just have to deal with eating brownie soup. Oh, right, right. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. That works. I'll allow it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. I have to tell you this really quick anecdote just to show the difference between the kid who was really excited to create this cleaning list and actually do the work. So a couple of days ago. How old is he? He's now 17. So Ryder was being snarky to me per usual, and I just got fresh and go, oh, Ryder, just go kiss a cow. And guess what his retort was? Huh. I guess I'm going to kiss you. Oh. Shots fired. Yeah. So there you Hold go. Keep in mind, though, he gave it as good as he got. It was smart. I mean, that was like super clever. I had to like, hats off, sub. I love it because, you know, my nephews, as That's they were growing clear. up, my sister hated it. Because I, I taught them to argue fast and argue everything. Because in my mind, if I'm wrong and they convince me I'm wrong, <laughs> good on them. Good on them. So I like that talking back. I think it inspires powerful youth. That's great. Men teaching other men how to be men. That's good. <laughs> Leave it up. Wow. Good stuff. Ouch. Good stuff.
All right, Ennis, I think you have an analogy for all of our viewers. The world, the world is watching. The world is watching. All six or seven of us. Hey, don't sell yourself short. Short? Seven's awesome. Well, my bar's a little higher. I'm thinking 12. I'm reaching. I'm reaching. The reason you're going to be mad at me is because I'm going to ask for permission to change my analogy. Permission granted. Thank you. Because I had some qualms about your other one, but we can talk about that later. Really? Well, just because I just bought a new truck. I don't know. I think you would really enjoy it. Then. Well, I saw your movie on it. I saw your movie. Oh, did you? That was one yes. of my earlier works. It's kind of embarrassing, but I love it. I love it anyway. It's flashy. My favorite is the little video of the kids like being adults. That is so cool how you did I that. I pay for Envato Elements. It's 30 bucks a month, and I get unlimited stock video and assets. So I don't actually know those children. They're random. Oh, I thought you hired them or something. <laughs> no. Like a really low rate. You get $1 an hour. Okay, sir. Popsicles. Children work for popsicles. <laughs> That's true. What do they know? So with my analogy, I want to start and I, I want to, the analogies yes. around resource planning and capacity allocation. Like I'm asleep. I'm a little tired. Pick me up. So it's a really exciting subject in Agile, right? We're all passionate now because I said it. Have you ever gone on vacation? Yes. No, I mean, seriously, have you ever taken a vacation that involved a plane flight? Well, let me ask you a question. So you planned your vacation, right? You have your flight scheduled. You have two children. Three children, if you count your husband. I'm the child in that <laughs> couple. Four children. <laughs> right. You have the flight. That's fair. You're going somewhere awesome. Mm -hmm. You told everyone at work. Maybe you even canceled the postal service because you're be gone for a month and you're really lucky. I did that once. Yeah. So you handled all this amazing stuff. And then let me ask you a question. On the day of your flight, did you forget to go on vacation and go to work instead? No. Why not? Because it was important to me. And I already paid money for it and work is dumb. Let me ask you another question. How many times have you been on an agile team that has done capacity planning or resource allocation? And then halfway through a sprint had a developer announce, oh, by the way, I'm going on vacation or I've had a training. All the time. That's kind of like human beings, right? Or on our vacation and then my husband got sick, but it's like, eh, I guess we'll just deal with this. Isn't that interesting though? When it's your vacation, you're responsible. Mm -hmm. You didn't miss it. But when someone else is doing capacity planning and resource allocation, suddenly it's not your responsibility or accountability to show up. That's where you're going. True. And the analogy is where we fail is literally doing that exercise. Capacity planning and resource allocation takes the responsibility and accountability away from the team. That's fair. When someone else is doing it in their ivory tower and we're like, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. I wasn't even listening. It's not my fault. But you take it away and you say, okay, well, this was your responsibility. There's no other lines here. Why wasn't it done? Exactly. Like if my neighbor's going on a vacation, I'm not going to care. Like, I hope you do miss it going to Paris every other week. <laughs> like sabotage it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been a great conversation about agile analogies. And if you've enjoyed our conversation about agile analogies like Jill and I have, well, one, leave us a comment below about analogies that you have in your agile world. And let us know if you want us to do another one because Jill and I love this, but if it's just us, well, we'll, we'll still do it, but we'd like it if we're doing it for the audience as well. We probably so. would. Like, look how cool we are. We just watch it over and over again ourselves. Man, <laughs> I watch my own videos all the time and laugh. I love it. So yes, and any other ideas you have that you'd like us to chat about, or if you'd like to uh, be a guest, we're more than happy. Please reach out.